Hi, I'm Tony Northrup, and for chapter eight of my book, Stunning Digital Photography, I'm in my backyard to show you how to get extremely detailed, close up, beautiful, and well lit pictures of songbirds. And the best part is, you can use these techniques to get great pictures with any telephoto lens. Even an inexpensive 75 to 300 or 70 to 200, just bring whatever you got. Now, I'm standing in front of this forsythia bush because just a few days ago it was brilliant yellow and it looked just absolutely gorgeous and I knew it would be the perfect backdrop for some bird pictures. It's lost its bloom since then, but I still want to show you how I got all the birds to come to this bush and perch just perfectly for me. I knew I wanted this bush to be my backdrop, but I didn't have birds perching for me. You can hear there are a few birds who live in the bush, but they tended to stay inside the bush where I couldn't photograph them. So I used a couple of techniques to draw them out. And the first is, of course, food. It's really easy to set up a bird feeder. And I've put three different bird feeders here to attract different types of birds. So get the food that is appropriate for the types of birds that you have in your area. Um, you'll see I have two of the identical uh, squirrel proof bird feeders here for the, filled with different seeds. And then I have a hummingbird feeder here this will bring the birds out of the bush, and birds have a tendency to hop from wherever they rest over to a bird feeder, grab some food, and then hop back into the branches. I don't want to take pictures of birds on bird feeders. Please don't do that. It's not a great picture. You want them in a natural environment. So you want to photograph them after they hop off of the bird feeder to eat their seed. The bush itself wasn't the perfect backdrop because there were so many leaves and blooms in the way that it was hard to get a clear shot of the birds. So what I did was I set up a branch that I cut from another tree and buried it about six inches into the ground. This is enough to keep it nice and steady so that even the larger birds can land on it as a decent perch. You'll notice that I trimmed all the excess branches from this branch so that there were absolutely no distractions. All I have left is a nice, clean perch for them. So this is how I got the birds to the bush. I left this up for a couple of days so that they could find it and kind of get used to it. Now I'll show you how I got so close to the birds. This is my hunting blind. It's a two or three person pop-up hunting blind. Cost about $85. As you can see, it's got a camouflage exterior, which helps me in the woods, but probably doesn't help so much in a backyard since it's got trees printed on it. However, it still serves to mask my presence and my movements. You can see the front of my lens is poking out here. I have the camera attached to a tripod. This is a camouflage mesh which I've hung over the window. The nice thing about the mesh is it makes it more difficult for the birds to see through the window and see my own movements, but it still allows me to see through it. At least it took a little bit of practice, but I was able to watch what was going on on the outside. You can see I've pulled a hole in the mesh and poked the front of the lens through it. That allows me to freely move the lens without having the camouflage actually covering the lens at all. I set the blind up about 10 feet in front of the bird feeders and where I hoped the birds would perch. That was plenty of room for me. If you have a shorter lens, you can set your blind up a little bit closer. It might take you a little bit longer for the birds to get accustomed to. If you can, if you're setting it up in your own yard, set the blind up a couple of days ahead of time, and this will give the birds a chance to get accustomed to the presence of the blind, so they're not freaked out by this new thing anymore. Once you're inside the blind, you'll find it takes 10 or 15 minutes for them to settle down because, of course, they'll notice you getting in there and be a little freaked out. But look, these are just long-evolved dinosaurs. They don't have the best memory. Now, let's take a look inside the blind. Now, as you can see, the blind does help mask your movements, but the birds can still see through the window. Uh, and the mesh here helps too, but frankly, I'm dressed like Colonel Sanders and I have this like blinding white hair, so I'm still gonna stand out. I need to blend into the black interior of the blind and not the camouflage outside, so I'm gonna put on a black shirt and a dark hat and meet you back here in a second. This particular blind costs me about $85. It's a pop-up blind and it sets up in about three minutes. You can also get smaller blinds for a single person that will only cost you about 35 bucks. Just be sure that you get a blind that has enough room for a tripod inside of it. You're going to want the sturdiest tripod that you have and the biggest head that you have because most tripods are meant to hold smaller cameras with a regular zoom lens and not a telephoto zoom lens. If you have a bigger zoom lens, it'll have a mount that's directly on the lens itself and you should use that. If you don't, no problem at all. Just attach the tripod directly to your camera. Now, if you're doing this right, then you've got the blind really close to the birds and your telephoto lens won't focus that close. 
To work around this, you can add an extension tube. An extension tube just separates the lens and the body just a little bit. It's this black piece right here, and that allows your lens to focus closer than it would normally. You lose infinity focus, but it's worth it to be able to get this close to birds. Extension tubes like this don't cost you too much. You can get a complete set for 50 to 75 bucks. Just make sure that you get one that supports autofocus. For more information about extension tubes, refer to chapter 12 of my book, Stunning Digital Photography, as well as chapter eight. So now let's talk about camera settings. I put my camera in shutter priority and set the shutter to 1 250th of a second. I also set the ISO to automatic. This will allow the camera to automatically change both the ISO and aperture as the lighting conditions change or as birds move from light and into the shadow. 1 250th of a second is generally enough to get most of your pictures nice and sharp. Of course, our camera is on a tripod, so we don't need to worry about camera shape, but we still have to worry about motion blur. And these little birds, they never stop moving. They're constantly changing position and twitching their head. So you're never gonna get every shot sharp. Your best bet is to take as many pictures as possible and hope that some of them capture that moment when they just freeze very briefly in between their jerky head movements. Once you get some practice with 1 250th of a second, try using an even lower shutter speed. I often shoot down as low as 1 90th of a second. This lets your camera use the lowest possible ISO, reducing your noise, and allows the camera to increase the aperture, allowing for more depth of field and even sharper pictures. So experiment with different settings. Also use both continuous focus and continuous shutter. Hold down that shutter button and take just as many pictures as you can. You should be taking hundreds of pictures per session. As long as you can keep that bird in focus, you should keep firing. Now, remember it doesn't count if you don't have eye contact, so keep that finger off the shutter until the bird is either in a perfect profile or looking towards you. If you have a hard time focusing, switch from continuous focus to single autofocus. And after you take every three or four shots, refocus the camera and try again. You'll find that you'll still get plenty of shots out of focus, but again, this is one of those cases where the first tip in the book will help you out, take lots of pictures and delete most of them. Now the bird food is a good way to get birds to your feeder, but what if there's a specific species you're after and they're not landing in the area? Well, I've listened to a lot of bird songs, so I've gotten familiar with them, and while I was in my blind, I could hear this cardinal calling outside of the blind, and I could even see it in the trees around me, but it wouldn't come perch where I could take a picture. So I broke out my iPhone here, any smartphone will do, and I played a pre-recorded cardinal song over and over again on a loop. And wouldn't you know it, in about 10 seconds it started singing back, and in a couple of minutes it came to check out either its potential mate or competition. And it kept looking around for about half an hour for this other bird moving from spot to spot, so it gave me lots of great opportunities to photograph it. Bird calls will give you varying effects depending on the bird and the specific type of call. They each have many different calls, and some of them mean I'm hungry, some of them mean I'm looking for a mate, some of them are defending their territory and might actually scare birds away. Some calls, like those of a blue jay, are rather aggressive and will scare other types of birds away. So use them with caution and knowledge, but it's a great thing to experiment with because it can lure in just about any bird if you learn what you're doing. At the end of this lesson, I'll jump back to my computer and show you how you can get MP3s of just about any bird call. Use the movements of the sun and clouds to control your lighting. I think the best lighting is when the sun is low to the sky and behind you. Then it's creating this front lighting on the birds that just really brings out their bright colors and gives them this really distinct catch light. I also like nice overcast skies because they bring out the depth and create this really large, even catch light that shows the round form of the bird's eyes. Backlighting is to be avoided because that casts the bird in shadow. It creates a nice rim of light, but you don't get any catch light and the colors just look completely washed out. If you have to shoot with the sky as your background, make sure that you have clear blue skies. A nice cold day helps here. If there are clouds in the sky or the sun is behind the bird, then you'll end up with this ugly blown out white background. Now, you're definitely going to need to plan to spend some time just waiting for the birds. I spent anywhere from half an hour to a couple of hours out here at a time. When you have some downtime, I suggest you refocus the camera on the ideal place for the birds to perch. So you know that branch that you set up in the ground? Focus on the best possible place. It might not be where the birds show up, but if they do, you'll be ready. And I'd rather have you miss a shot 
when the bird is perched in some less than ideal place, then have you missed that perfect shot? So now I'll show you how you can find bird calls and copy them over to your phone. I'm at the allaboutbirds.org website, which is generously run by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. I'll search for a species that I'm interested in, about the tufted titmouse. And now I'll just scroll down to the sound tab. This shows all the different sounds that they have on record for the tufted titmouse, and often there's really useful descriptions. So you might browse through and pick the song that you're most interested in. At this point, I need to view the source of the page so I can find the underlying file that is played on the web page and download it. So I'll right click the page and then click view page source. I'm using Google Chrome. Other browsers will do something similar, though they all work a little bit differently. Now I'm going to search the page by pressing Control F on my keyboard, and I'm going to search for the phrase .mp3. This shows me the underlying file name that's being played when you click that little play tool on the web page. You can see the, uh, it says value equals and then mp3 equals. Everything after that equal sign, I want to copy to the clipboard right through the .mp3. So it'll start with a slash and it will end with mp3. And then I'll right click this and copy it to the clipboard. Now I'll just open up a new tab and go to www.allaboutbirds.org and after .org I'm going to paste in the path that I copied. So now it reads www.allaboutbirds.org slash guide slash sound slash species and then the actual name of the file and I'll press enter here. Now I can just right click the page and click save as. Pick a folder and specify a name for it and then save it. Now it's just like any other mp3 file. You can drag it into the iTunes library or copy it to your phone or other mp3 player, however it is you normally would do a music file. If you like this video, there's a lot more like it in my book, Stunning Digital Photography. Here it is on Amazon, but you can also buy it from the links down below. I also hope you'll subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this and check out our Northrop Photography Facebook page for new pictures and videos all the time. Thanks so much.